this morning? Yes. You ready for a fired up day? Yes. Guess what? We're going to give one to you. It's going to be an awesome day. You ready? Yes. All right. We're going to start out with a, a prayer and an introduction from the host priest. So at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Father Flynn. begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious Lord, we ask send your Holy Spirit down upon us. Enrich this day with your Holy Spirit. May we come to know you more deeply in these uh, speakers and in our fellowship with one another. We ask you to especially bless those who are at home taking care of our business this day. Uh, give us health and prosperity in all we do. May all of our actions, words, and deeds bring you glory. And may our life always be enriched by the Eucharist in which you give us your body and blood and soul and divinity. May we always remember that we become uh, agents of the Lord in a fallen world. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, gentlemen, I just want to welcome you here to St. Francis. Uh, I'm the pastor of St. Francis of Assisi here in Grapevine. Uh, my name is Father Flynn. Uh, I'm actually a, a local uh, Texan. I hail from Arlington, Texas. Um, and we moved to Granbury uh, when I was in junior high, and I ended up um, going into the Army right after, right after high school. And, you know, I thought it was going to be just a normal Army career. You know, we hadn't had a war since Vietnam, and I thought, I'm just going to get my college fund, go to college, and that'll be it. Well, the Army had a different, different story for me. Uh, when I was stationed in Germany, in Bindelok, Germany, uh, just outside of Nuremberg, uh, going towards East Germany, that was when East Germany still existed, uh, I had a, uh, this is probably TMI, I had a German girlfriend. And, uh, <laughs> and she didn't think it was fair that every time we were around her friends that, that I spoke English. So uh, I learned German fairly quickly. And uh, they were asking for volunteers to go to a uh, sniper school in, in NATO uh, in a place called Oberammergau. And my commander said, Flynn, uh, you speak German the best, so you're going to German sniper school, this NATO sniper school. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not really interested. I, I think I'm good at what I'm doing. And he said, well, you're right, you're going. <laughs> so I went to the NATO sniper school, though, down in Oberammergau, and when I finished, they said, you know, you did a really good job. Uh, we would like you to continue. Uh, and go through ranger school. So I was like, yeah, I'm not really interested. It's not really my thing. And they said, yeah, right, go, go ahead and go. <laughs> so, so when I finished, uh, I became a sniper um, and uh, got assigned to some great units throughout uh, the United States Army. Um, and, you know, I, it, it was an interesting career. You know, being a sniper is, is not the most normal thing on earth, especially now that I'm a priest, I think back to those experiences. Uh, I, I say, you know, I used to arrange the meeting with God, now I try to make it more pleasure. <laughs> so, the, uh, the army in, in, their, in, in, our, in our time in history, you know, I got to see the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, the next day, me and my best friend flew to Berlin. Uh, we're standing on the wall with hammers and, and, and bringing it down. Uh, then the Gulf War started up, so I got sent out to the Gulf War, uh, where the Army assigned me to be a, a in a fast attack vehicle. If anybody knows what that is, uh, it looks like anybody see the, uh, what was it called? Uh, yeah, uh, the rat patrol. It makes you rat patrol when you're that is, you age yourself. Uh, so I had a uh, not armored at all, uh, amazing dune buggy with machine guns on it. It was the best thing ever. 
<laughs> a 20 year old kid. And uh, so I just ran around the desert finding the enemy and showing him to Allah and, and having a good time. <laughs> then, then the army <coughs> sent me off to go find a guy that uh, many of you probably heard of. I went down to try to find uh, a guy named Pablo Escobar. So uh, I went down to try to hunt him down and the army put me in a four-star hotel in Medellin, Colombia. And uh, we never found him. <laughs> we never found him. But I knew every bar in Colombia. <laughs> but that was that was a period of time where I would have called myself an atheist. I, I didn't really believe in God at that time. Uh, and then I I finished my term in 1990, the end of 1991, and uh, went to Texas A&M University. <laughs> majored in engineering, uh, and that's where I became a true scientific atheist, right? I, did, I had no, no use for God, I didn't believe in Him, I didn't have any understanding of Him. And then all of a sudden through science I came to understanding of God's true, true presence in the world. It, it came about uh, studying physics and other things. I, I, was, I had this quagmire with, with science itself. How can you say that matter is neither created nor destroyed? and then be alive, right? It doesn't make any sense.